this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Kingston KC3000 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install this drive and the various steps, as well as things to bear in mind. I'm going to show you the BIOS settings, Windows settings, and tips on how to install it and the best ways to install it and test to make sure it's running at that good speed. Now, this version is obviously a four terabyte drive, which is insane, but the steps here are the same no matter what size drive you purchased. And so I'm going to show you the setup process for it in a couple of different motherboards with the same sort of logic applied to each of them. But there are some differences that are worth bearing in mind. Now, I've done a video separately on how you need to think about where you're putting the drive on your motherboard. Most modern motherboards have one, two, three, four slots on them potentially where you can install and where you install the drive can affect the speed of it. You often find that the top slot, the one that you can see me using here, gives you the fastest speed. However, you may also find if you're populating multiple slots that it changes the speed. So depending on where you're installing it, it can have an impact. So check out that video linked in the description to find out more about that. But here you can see the installation process from multiple different angles. You'll see that basically the drive just slips into that spot. And on this motherboard, it's then held in place with a small little plastic clip. Now, for a different shot, you can see here I'm using a different drive, but I want to demonstrate that some motherboards require a tiny little screw. Usually the screw is included with your motherboard. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the Kingston drive. However, I will leave links in the description to those screws if you need to purchase them separately. Those are M2 screws. And if you can't find it in your motherboard, or if you did a pre-built machine, you don't happen to have those screws, then you will find the links down there that will be useful to you. Now I'm showing you multiple clips from different videos with different drives, but I just wanted to show different motherboards same sort of logic, how they plug in, how they connect up, but the fact that you will need a screw. Some motherboards you'll see have like a thermal shielding. You could see the initial one that I did, the Strix motherboard did have. This NZXT motherboard doesn't really, it just has a plastic cover that sits over the top. But again, you can see that you need an M2 screw, which was included with this WD Black drive, but doesn't come with a Kingston drive. It's a tiny little screw. And that basically holds one side of the drive down to ensure that it's installed properly and obviously doesn't come out of where it's clipped in. Now you can see in a lot of different shots here that I've installed on the top slot and you will get maximum speed out of that. Obviously it will also depend on your motherboard. This is a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive which can get up to 7,000 megabytes per second. But if you're installing it on a Gen 3 motherboard, an older motherboard, you might not get those speeds. If you're installing it on a lower slot, one of the other slots on the motherboard, or on an expansion card, because you can get various different cards, you might find it doesn't run at the maximum speed. And I'm going to show you how to test that a bit later on, as well as some other things. Now, once you've got the drive installed, make sure you apply any of the thermal covers or heat sinks and other things that are included with the motherboard. You can see this one has a little bit of a thermal paste basically sticker that you put on top of it and then you put this cover back on top of that that then ensures the shielding for it but it also allows for the dissipation of heat so it's really important to put that back in place because they can get quite hot and obviously if they get hot that will thermal throttle and they won't run as fast so it's worth doing that making sure those are set up if you have them and here you can see on this motherboard there's actually another bracket down the bottom and you can take that off and down there, there's access to two more slots for M2 drives. Now, on this particular motherboard, actually, all of the slots will run at the same speed. But on others, I've found during testing that sometimes if you populate all of them, some of the other ones will only run at Gen 3 speeds or PCIe Gen 4, but X2 instead of X4. So not at maximum speed. So you want to make sure that if you paid good money for a driver, it is running at the speed that's necessary. You can see down here, there's also a sticker on the drive initially when you first get out of the box on the spot where it's going to go. So just remove that first so that you make sure that you basically got that thermal shielding on both sides of the drive. Just basically like a little rubber shielding down there that will protect it. Slot it in and then clip it in place or screw it down depending on what style of motherboard you've got. And then again, just put that shielding back over the top of it. So you can see the installation process is really simple. There's no power cables or anything to worry about. It just plugs in, it's connected up and it's ready to go. This is all done for demo purposes outside the case 
in the initial installation, but you could easily just do this inside the PC when your motherboard's in there, as long as it's not plugged in, make sure it's disconnected from the mains, power supply, and also that you're careful while doing it. You may well need to remove your graphics card. You could see that top slot, for example, will be blocked by the graphics card if you're doing that. So just think about those sorts of things before you get started. But for the ease of capturing the footage and for demoing, I was just doing it this way. Now, once that's all finished, plug your PC back in, turn it on, boot up into Windows. Now hit that Windows Start button and then search for Disk Management. So we're basically looking to find how to get that drive into Windows and get Windows to recognize it. So if you find you can't find it in the Explorer, go for this, look for um, Disk Management or Create and Format Disk Partitions. That will open up the Disk Management tool. And then hopefully if it's recognized, it'll pop up and it will say Initialize Disk. So it'll recognize that the disk is there. Now, just for reference, this footage is from a crucial drive that I did because I couldn't capture it for the Kingston drive for certain reasons, but the process is the same across the board. So you basically need to go into the disk management setup. I mean, obviously if it's not recognized in Explorer, hopefully it will pop up there. If it doesn't, I'll show you steps in the BIOS that you might need to go through. Once that's done, basically you then click OK. And what you'll find is then if you expand the window, you may well find that there's a drive down there that's black. You can see it's black and it doesn't have a drive letter and it's not appearing obviously in Explorer. So click on that and click new simple volume and then follow through the steps to assign it a drive label. Basically we want to give it a letter that will then appear in Explorer and then assign it a volume name, so volume label. In this one obviously I called it the crucial drive but you could name it whatever you want. This was from the crucial drive as I said for the installation for that but we're doing a Kingston drive here so maybe you want to call it that or call it whatever you're going to put on there. Games, videos, images, whatever you're planning on storing on that drive. Name it logically, it doesn't matter what you put, it's just for your own personal reference. The drive letter and uh, labeling then means that it'll appear in the Explorer and then you can access it and then you can play around with it. Now the next stage is to basically test to make sure it's running at the right speed because you want to check. So I'd recommend checking out Crystal Disk Mark. This is a free tool that you can download and install and I'll leave a link in the description to download it. Once you've gone through the installation process for this tool, basically what it does is it runs a benchmark of sorts where it's basically transferring some fake files back and forth into the drive to make sure it's running at the right speeds. So you select the drive that you want with the letter that you've chosen and then obviously go into settings and change that to NVMe, set it to nine uses up to 64 gigs and then basically run that test. Click to run and it will run those tests for a little bit of a time. But what it allows you to do is to check that the drive is running at the right speed. So you can see the process here. Excuse the blurry footage, it was a bit of a problem with OBS. But you can see that the Kingston drive is running. I've got Task Manager running on the left hand side just to give you an idea of the speeds there. But then when we get through the process of basically running it for a little while, you'll see that the speeds start to go up and it's topping out at 6,988 megabytes per second, which is just a marginally bit slower than the 7,000 that's promised. So obviously, basically that's worked as it should have done. And I'm happy with that. So the performance has worked out, as I said earlier. If you find that it's running at slower speeds, just keep in mind that maybe it's a slot problem. So check out that other video to find out more about that. Now, if you've had problems with it where it's not recognized in Windows and you can't see it through any of those steps I've just shown you, then go into your BIOS, turn on your PC and keep mashing that delete key until your BIOS loads up. You may find, obviously it's going to vary from motherboard to motherboard, but there are settings in the BIOS that you might need to tweak in order to get it to work. So the first steps is basically to see whether the BIOS is recognizing it. So you can see that in this instance, obviously it is. We have it in the boot section here. You can see the M2 drive, the Kingston drive is indeed recognized. Windows is installed on it. So if it's the only drive and you've installed Windows on it, chances are it'll be pretty straightforward. But if it's an additional drive that you're adding in alongside a hard drive, or an SSD, there might be some other problems. By the way, I also did a video on how to clone your Windows drive onto another drive. So if you want to move Windows onto an NVMe SSD, then check out the link in the description to that. That should make your life a little bit easier. Now, if we go into the advanced settings and poke around, look for anything that's basically NVMe or PCIe settings, you can see that there's NVMe configuration. We also have onboard devices here, and you can go through and look for the settings here. So look into underscore three configurations currently set to auto you could put that to PCIe mode 
And then you'll also see below that you also have some other settings for PCIe X16 G4. So that applies to things like if you have an expansion card like the Hyper M2 card from Asus, for example, and you've mounted drives in there instead of in the M2 slot, you may play around with those settings in order to check it and see if it works. You can also go and look for the Advanced System Agent Configuration Tools, and in there you'll see that there's a PCIe Express configuration. You'll notice that the M2 slots, you have the option there to look and set the speed for them, so you can choose the speed and set that up in that way and basically tweak these settings poke around see if you can find the right settings sometimes there are settings in the motherboard which may be disabling your drive so it's worth bearing in mind and just having a work look through and checking the mvme configuration and pcie settings basically to sort this out another thing to keep in mind is also if you do have sata or SSDs plugged in, that may well be affecting it. So be sure to check out your motherboard manual to find out what the implications of that are. Sometimes if you're using the top slot on your M2 drive, it might disable your SATA drive as well and various different ports. Now, if you go to the easy mode, you'll also see various other settings, including boot priority. Turn on XMP if you haven't got that turned on already and resizable bar if you can. These aren't related to your NVMe drive, but they will give you better performance overall. And that's something to worth doing while you're in here. And then save and exit and it'll reboot into Windows. And then you should have a nice shiny setup with a much faster drive and loads of storage space. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe and drop me a comment. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.